Hi, how's it going? So, um, we've got our program and it works. But as I was mentioning um, in the last video, around the edges, well, let me see. It's very subtle, but around the edges there are some jagged lines and things. So, um, in this video, we're going to be setting up um, multi sampled anti aliasing to get rid of those very subtle um, jagged edges around objects. So, let's well, before we get into it, the basic theory of multi sampling is we have our frame buffer, which is a bunch of you know pixels that we're writing to, and um, with multi sampling, we write to the pixel we write to each pixel a number of times and then we do like a linear combination of some kind of those pixels and get that down to a single image so what we do is we have um, one multi sampled um, frame buffer that we're drawing to and then we kind of bounce that down to a single sample frame buffer which is the one get, that gets presented on the screen we can't really present a multi sample frame buffer on the screen it, it's not that sort of data structure so um, let's get into it. So MSAA multi sampled anti aliasing. Now we'll create the um, multi sampled color um, buffer, which will store the data. Okay, before we go ahead and create everything, we will need to kind of query our device to see just how many samples it supports. So um, the color buffer and the depth buffer are going to be multi-sampled. And these could have different, um, the system could support different maximum count uh, of samples for each of them individually. So we're going to find the, the highest sample count which will support both if that makes sense Okay, so this limits field um, pretty much is what it sounds like. Um, and what we do is to get the maximum of these, we take the bitwise AND. This means that if any of the flags are missing, they will restrict the answer, right? So let's say we have, um, I don't know, let's say this one uh, color samples supports a maximum of four samples. This color sample supports a maximum of two. Well, then it's probably a bad example because two and four bitwise. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, no, that'll that'll work. Right. So if it supports okay, if it supports four, then it supports one, two, and four. If that makes sense. Then this supports two. That supports one and two. So then the bitwise end of that would be limiting it at two, if that makes sense. We can think about it that way. Okay, so now what we basically do is we just kind of count down from the highest sample count down to the lowest and return as soon as we match. Hopefully we don't have to check whether our system supports one bit. Um, okay, so ah, it's fine. C++ often complains that enums aren't class enums. It's fine. Right, um, plus it's completely out of our control because we didn't write that library. Okay, so then the next step is when we pick our physical device, we query the um, 
we query the maximum um, sample count and store that. Okay, so now um, when we create the, okay, so when we go to create our multi-sampled um, color buffer, we're going to need to create an image. And in order to do that, we're going to need a create image function, which can also create multi-sample images. And that's no problem. I just need to find the create image. Okay. So we're going to take this and as well as the MIP map levels, we're going to um, specify that we can um, create the image with a different number of samples. And we do that down here. We have sample count one bit. Nope, just pass in samples. And now we're going to need to fix up a bunch of errors. Okay, so it's complaining here. And um, this is to create the texture image. Um, we will create that with one sample. Now it's complaining in depth resources. Now it's tempting to, okay, we've got one MIP, one MIP map level. It's tempting to say, hey, one sample, but remember our frame buffer is multi-sampled and that includes the depth buffer. So we will pass in the sample count there. Okay, so that's all good, 161 warnings. Hey, you know you're doing the right thing when you've got 161 warnings. Okay, 56, that's, it's fine, it's fine. Those things are all, they're not relevant. Okay, so then what do we need to do? Well, if we look down here, we've got create depth resources. Let's also create um, our frame buffer or rather our color buffer for our frame buffer. Here, the only real new thing is this flag here, uh, transient attachment bit. So transient um, indicates that the resources will pretty much be short term. They'll only be around for one frame or so. Um, and this helps the device to optimize things a little bit. Then we create the image view. that is done. Now let's tidy up the creation and destruction of these things. So we'll go back to the Vulcan stuff. Okay, so color and depth resources are created at the same spot, pretty much above the render pass. Now there's something I missed in the previous videos and that was, well, of course, the um, depth resources are tied to the frame buffer and the frame buffer is tied to the swap chain. So this should really be, um, this should really be recreated when the swap chain is recreated and destroyed when the swap chain is cleaned up. So we'll go to um, recreate swap chain then where was I just before the render pass? That's fine. Create that there. And then down here, this, all this depth stuff, let's um, take that out there and put it into the cleanup swap chain. All right, so fingers crossed, we have got everything done. Um, of course.
course not, of course not everything, but at least the thing should work. And by work, I mean not produce an error. So yep, there we have it, it's working, no errors. Um, note that the memory is quite a bit higher than it was before, it was like 60, 70 megabytes before, now it's close to 100, that's fine. Um, so this, um, the multi-sample frame buffer has been created, but we're not using it at this point. Um, and it turns out that Vulkan is pretty good at um, bouncing this down. So let's go to the, basically we're going to go to the graphics pipeline sort of stuff. Um, I don't know where to start. Let's just go, okay, why not? We'll, we'll start from the top, if I can find this. So we're looking for frame buffers. Okay, so our attachments right now, we now want to attach three things. And here's how I'm going to do it. Okay, so the first two are basically making up our multi-sample frame buffer. We've got the image view and the depth image view. And then that information, or really just this information, the color information, is going to be bounced down to the um, the flat image single sample, which will be put on the screen. Now we'll go to the render pass. So what this is, this first bit is the multi-sampled color stuff. Um, go sample is set there. Initial layout is fine. Final layout instead of present because we're not, you don't present a multi-sampled um, buffer. We'll go, um, we'll just put this as a general color attachment. Okay, so that is all looking good. Then we go down here to depth and um, depth is going to be multi-sampled as well. Now we're going to grab all of this and we're going to use it to define our uh, regular color or our single sample. Snapple. Let's see, samples is going to be one bit. And we're going to set it up as a um, source for presenting, because we're going to, going to present from that one. That is looking good. Okay, so now I'll just change these names. Um, so the, the actual name for a, a buffer which gets bounced down to is a resolve. So we'll use that there. And there. Okay, so um, although we kind of are defining a new um, color attachment. It's not really a color attachment because it has a special meaning. It is a resolve attachment because again, um, Vulcan is going to automatically take that multi-sample and bounce it down into this one. So it takes care of that for us. That's cool. And then we just need to change this. We have color attachment, depth attachment, and then color attachment resolve. Then I think there's about one more step to do, and that is close this up and go down to the graphics pipeline and look through these stages and there's the multi-sampling. We just need to set the um, multi-sampling count. Okay, and just see if this works. Okay, so that's cool. As a matter of fact, it is working. Um, it is very subtle, but if we switch that on and off and laid them two side by side, um, then this would be a lot smoother around the edges. So there's one more thing we can do, and this 
doesn't. Curiously, this actually just gives me a performance boost um, rather than improving the picture quality. But if we go to um, the logical device and then the features and we go, uh, what is this? It's Yeah, sample rate shading. So what this does is it um, kind of does anti-alias, anti-aliasing on the internals of a texture as well, which is kind of similar to what we did before, I know, but anyway. So um, let's just run that. And it makes almost no difference. However, I mean, it's a bit hard to point out now that I'm running a screen recorder at the same time, but when I tried this before, there was a noticeable increase in um, frame rate. Not that it matters. I mean, what's the difference between 8,000 frames per second and 8,500? Oh no, it's a small, <laughs> it's a small difference. Um, okay. so. That's, that's cool, that's fun. Um, that'll be it for now. We're really, we're about done with this series for the time being. There's one more thing that I wanna do and that's to get multiple objects on screen. Um, and that's really more of a code design thing. That's just taking this massive, like almost 2000 line thing and breaking it out into objects. Which, um, yeah, I'll do that at a later point. Anyway, that'll be it for now. Have fun, and I'll see you later. Bye.